Hello, we are on our next chapter, An Absent-Minded Morning. On the second day of school, Mr. Jupiter took attendance. Raise your hand if you're not here, he said. The children looked at one another. Then Jackie's hand shot into the air. I'm not here, she snickered. <laughs> I've gone to the National Tetherball Tournament to see the Hoboken Blowfish take on the Altoona Poodles. The other students giggled, but Jupiter calmly said, a reasonable excuse. He wrote Jackie's name on the attendance slip. Then he asked, is anyone else absent? Me, said Bruce. I'm staying home to play meteor monsters. Yeah, added Lenny, and I'm staying with him. After all, the two-player version is the best. Perfectly understandable, said Mr. Jupiter, and he wrote their names down too. I couldn't come to school today either, said Victoria. I'm having a facial. I see, said Mr. Jupiter, and I couldn't come because I'm watching cartoons, said Emberly. Of course, said Mr. Jupiter, and I couldn't come because I ate too many hot dogs and got a stomach ache, said Ham. My sympathies, said Mr. Jupiter. Melvin waved his hand in the air. Ask me, ask me why I'm not here. The others just ignored him. Why aren't you here? Asked Mr. Jupiter. Because I don't like school, replied Calvin. Hey, hollered Lenny, that was what I'm not here. Get serious, snorted Stanford. You already said you were playing video games with Bruce. For your information, Mr. Know-it-all Smarty Pants, I'm absent because I'm playing video games with Bruce and because I don't like school. That's too bad, said Mr. Jupiter, and he wrote all their names on his attendance slip. Is anyone else absent? We are, cried Ashley A and Ashley B, and me, added Ashley Z, and me, repeated Humphrey. Mr. Jupiter took down their names. Then he pointed at Rose. Um, are you here? No, answered Rose. I overslept. What about you, Mr. Jupiter? Excuse me. What about you, Mr. Jupiter? asked Missy. Missy shook her head. I got lost on the way to school. And you, Mr. Jupiter looked at Rachel. <sighs> Beg your pardon, said Mr. Jupiter. <sighs> Rachel said again. I'm sorry, said Mr. Jupiter. What? said Rachel. <sighs> Mr. Jupiter shrugged and added her name to the slip. I'm not here either, Bernadette said with a dramatic sigh. I just, I just wasn't in the mood. Hey, cried Lenny, that's why I'm not here, because I wasn't in the mood and I don't like school and I'm playing video games with Bruce. Stanford snorted. Get furious. Lenny smirked. Get lost. And Amisha raised her hand. Don't forget about me, she said. I'm not here either. Why not? asked Mr. Jupiter. Amisha thought a moment. I'm visiting my grandparents in Calcutta, she finally said. Beautiful city, remarked Mr. Jupiter. I once worked as an elephant trainer there. Amisha smiled as Lil burst into verse. I'm writing a poem so I can't come to school. I hope you forgive me for being so cruel. Of course I will, said Mr. Jupiter, and he wrote the last of the names on his attendance slip. Then he looked around the classroom. Isn't anyone here today? Lenny shook his head. It looks like you're all by yourself. Actually, said Mr. Jupiter, I'm not here either. You're not, said Bernadette. No, said Mr. Jupiter. I'm trekking through the Amazon rainforest in search of the rare and elusive golden-throated rat squirrel. You are, said Amisha. I am, said Mr. Jupiter, but don't worry. I have a substitute. He plopped a human skull onto his desk. The children stared wide-eyed. This is Mrs. Yorick, Mr. Jupiter explained. I found her on an archaeological dig along the Solo River in Java. The children kept staring. 
Mrs. York, continued Mr. Jupiter, is never absent. Can you guess why? The children shook their heads. Because, he said, she doesn't have any body to go out with. For one moment, the children sat in silence. Then Calvin chuckled. <laughs> and then Victoria giggled. <laughs> Soon all the children were rocking with laughter. No body! <laughs> How Lenny, that's a good one, Mr. Jupiter. Thank you, Leonard, said Mr. Jupiter. I thought it was pretty funny myself. And he laughed until his sides ached and his eyes teared. Then they all got down to work. The moral of this chapter is he laughs best who laughs last. What do you think that means? <laughs>